The challenge remains the same. On one side, we have our remote access users, and on the other side, we have the systems and resources that our users want to access. Traditionally, this would have been achieved through using a firewall and remote access software installed on every user's machine and asset. Although there is an easier way, a lighter way to achieve this with modern web-based services. Harmony Connect allows users to consume a management interface in the cloud, a SaaS platform, and integrate users to their applications. Users will have access to a web interface showing only the resources that they have permissions to access. We integrate with lots of multi-factor authentication mechanisms to ensure that the system's access is very safe and controlled. We also have inside the Harmony Connect system a gateway that will provide a data connection between the users and the applications they want to use, no matter if the data center they are accessing is in the cloud, is on-premise, or even at home. This is achieved by deploying a small connector. This is a container, and in this example, we're going to be showing this working inside a Linux system running Docker. This connector provides a tunnel back to the Harmony Connect SASE platform, and then from the connector that is hosted inside the data center over to the systems and resources that we want to access. This is how we provide traffic in both directions, allowing users in and data back through. So let's get straight to it. I'm going to connect to a Linux server that is running inside my Azure data center. The first thing I'm going to do is update any of the existing software and upgrade any of those components that are on there. This video has been sped up to ensure that you're not waiting too long for those key components. The next thing I'm going to do is install some of the key software that is going to be required in this installation. For now, don't worry too much about what some of these software packages are, as this is only one way of deploying containers. You might find that you have a preference of your own. Using the curl command, we download the Docker GPG keys. We quickly use the fingerprint command just to check that that key is in place. Follow that up, we are going to add some specific lines to the repository, ensuring that we can download the Docker software. And then once that's been done, we are going to request the Docker software. Docker is simply a virtualization platform for hosting containers. And the container we're going to use is going to be the Harmony Connect connector. Now that's complete, we need to head over to portal.checkpoint.com. In this instance, I've already set up my tenant and I'm going to activate a demo of Harmony Connect. Starting at this welcome screen, in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm going to select corporate applications. And then I'm going to set up my first data center. I give it a name. This particular one happens to be hosted in Azure. And I'm gonna select the location where I'd like this particular connector to be located. And for me, it's going to be in Ireland. Now here I have a command. This will be pasted into our Docker system and it will download the connector. Note I needed to append sudo to the beginning of this command. And then you will notice that the system will go to the internet and will pull down a copy of this connector software. If I run sudo docker ps, I can now see the listing of this particular container running and this one started eight seconds ago. This connector will now communicate to the Harmony SaaS platform and will ensure that we have a connection from your data center to our SaaS environment. I quickly refresh the page. And there we can see the connector has communicated back to the Harmony Connect platform and is now providing a tunnel into the data center. We find ourselves back at the welcome page. And again, in the bottom right-hand corner, we are going to select corporate applications, connect users, and we can see that we have the ability to connect one of many multi-factor authentication methods. But for this demo, I'm simply just going to communicate using username and password. We certainly wouldn't recommend this in a wild environment, in a live environment. But for this demo, it is perfectly sufficient. Click OK and an email will be sent to my email inbox. You can see here, I've been given an automatically generated password. Just quickly copy that. And then above, we're going to confirm my account. I'll confirm my email address, my temporary password, and will be quickly asked to generate a new password. Once that has been done, I have successfully registered as a user 
on the Harmony Connect portal. Once logged in, you will see at the moment, it is currently blank. And that is because we have not deployed any applications to the system. And that is the next stage of this demo. Again, back at the welcome page, we're going to define our first corporate application. Click on the plus, and we're going to choose the first application to deploy. I'm going to connect RDP, a remote desktop, using an in-browser RDB client. I'm going to give this a quick name. This is a Windows 10 machine. I'm going to select the data center that this is listed in. That's the one we set up just a moment ago and give it the IP address of my system. I can choose either transparent or managed. Transparent means that the user, every time they log in, will be, be expected to present the system credentialed. Whereas managed will ensure that the Harmony Connect platform stores a copy of the backend server's username and password, ensuring that the user's experience is seamless and they have no need to type in any additional information. So here I am typing in the username and password for that Windows 10 server. I have to do a couple more things. First one is to provide access to the correct user groups. In this instance, it is going to be the administrators group. I head over to policy, application access, and we can now see that that is the first application that has been deployed. I need to quickly manage the objects, come into the user administration, and then add myself to the administrators group. Once that's done, we can come back to the user portal, hit refresh, and there, I have my first application ready to access. I click this, and this will take me to an RDP session, a Windows desktop, that is hosted inside of my Azure data center, all wrapped inside this easy to use browser. So what other options do we have in terms of applications? Well, let's set up RDP again. But let's say I don't want to use the inbuilt browser. I want to use the native RDP client that is comes with Windows. So this time we're going to select transparent, which will force me, the client, to put in the Windows 10 username and password every single time I connect. Again, I select the correct site and IP address. I assign permissions to this user group. And when I refresh my portal, I am now given a second option. This option is to access this Windows 10 machine inside of my data center using the native Windows client. I click that and I get given a token which will be valid for a default of 22 hours. That time can be changed and the user settings. I connect in with my traditional RDP clients. I will authenticate with the correct credentials onto my test system, click OK. And there we have a typical access to a Windows system through our inbuilt Windows client. And there you have it, access to a Windows platform. So what other applications can we add? Let's set up one more application. Again, click plus. This time we're going to do an SSH connection. This time we're going to do a connection to our web application. Pop in the IP address of our system, select the create data center that this belongs in, and provide the username and password for that backend Linux server. Assign the correct user permissions, go to the user portal, hit refresh, and again, we will see a third application has been deployed and given access to our users. There are two credential options that can be used. We can generate a one-time password, or if the user has generated a client-side certificate key, you can use that as well. In this instance, we're going to use the SSH client PuTTY, and we're going to use this to connect into our system. We copy the host from the bottom section of credentials here, this will point our SSH session to the Checkpoint Harmony Connect platform, which will be used as a tunneling proxy to access the services inside of the Azure data center. OTP, because it's a one-time password token, will be used as my username, and the password will be one that has been automatically generated for this one use. Once that's pasted and entered in the system, I will be tunneled through 
the Harmony Connect platform and into my data center and have direct access to my SSH Linux server that runs in the back end. There is one last thing I would like to demonstrate in this demo, which is a simple web interface. That web server that we just SSH'd into does have a standard port 80 HTTP system. And let's just quickly set up a web-based application that users can view a web page. Click edit permissions, give the user's credentials as always, click refresh, and we are, we are given our fourth application. We click on this, and we are then given access to a test backend web interface. In this demonstration, we have set up our Linux environment, we've installed Docker, and then we have installed the Harmony Connect connector. If you already had a Docker environment, it would usually take somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes to connect into the Harmony portal, set up your tenant, enable the Harmony Connect demo, deploy a connector, and start deploying applications to your users. Hopefully from this demo, you can see how quick and easy it is to give secure and limited access to your users' platforms in a zero trust method. Thank you for watching.